Hey, what's up? So this is a quick guide to get you some realistic looking grading in your 3D models or just various types of grading if you're not looking for something realistic. Um, so say you're working on a, on a platform, you got a steel structure and you're ready to make your grading. I've already got a, a tread shown in here. I actually want to freeze that tread. Um, this is kind of a goofy looking platform, but it is a very low to the ground platform. Ignore that. This kind of applies to any platform you're looking to do. So first thing you're going to do is get your, the boundary for your uh, grading, whatever it may be. You may have to do a custom polyline. In this case, I've got a rectangular platform, so I'm just going to make a rectangular um, shape here, just a object. I'm going to offset it a quarter of an inch, which is pretty standard, quarter inch from the edge. Um, different grading manufacturers may do different things. You may have an overhang, again, a custom shape, a penetration. It doesn't matter as long as you make your shape. Now, I'm not at any, I'm not anywhere near zero, zero, and that will, is my other platform, that will uh, make an effect on how we do this. So what I'm going to do is move this off to the side, 20 feet. Okay, I don't want to be involved with my structure. Uh, but I do want to move it at a specific distance so that I can move the grading back. Now, there's a couple different types, and... I'm actually going to copy this over 10 feet, oops, not 10 inches, oh, freezing up a little bit, there we go, 10 feet and 20 feet to show you a few different types uh, of grading should you choose to do them. Um, maybe one more. All right, so the first type we're going to do is just a regular extrusion. Let's use a nominal grading height of one inch. It's pretty common to have either one inch or one and a quarter inch by three sixteenths bearing bars. Um, check with your grading manufacturer that you typically use, but if you're just looking for something to put in place, I say one inch by three sixteenths. So uh, some places will just have a solid object. You can do that. Oops, let me extrude this one inch. There we go. So we got one inch grading. Um, you could put this on a layer with transparency so that it shows up a bit. So I'm going to make a layer called uh, trans grading. We're going to put all of our grading on layer 8, or uh, layer 9. Color 9, I'm sorry, color 9. And then we're going to change the transparency of this particular one to about, um, I'd say, just we'll put 50 for now, somewhere right in the middle. Okay, so we're going to put this on transparent grading layer. It comes up a little bit darker because it's set to a transparency. All right, next type we're gonna do over here is gonna, the next three types are gonna be using hatching. Um, my elevation, if I do an ID, you can see my elevation on here says 109, four and a quarter. Um, if you're not at zero, you need to set your UCS to this elevation because hatches always show up wherever your elevation is, your Z axis. Um, if I were to just hatch this, and uh, we'll start off and just say, um, there is a grading hatch. It says great. It's the one I typically use. So if you're looking for it, just click here and hit G. It'll take you to the G's and you go to great. Um, I'm going to make this uh, 90 degrees. I want it north south. And a scale of 32 will give me where I want to be at. Typically, your grading, your grading spaces will be about four inches long. A scale of 32 will give you about that. So I hit uh, select objects and hit OK. Now watch what happens. Missing just disappears. It's not that it's gone. If I do a zoom extends, you can see it's way down here because it is at elevation zero. So I'm going to undo. All right, we're going to hatch again. But before I do that, I'm going to set my UCS right here on the corner. Now it's at the same elevation as this uh, grading panel at the bottom of the grading panel. So I'm going to do my hatch again. Everything's still there. I'm going to hit OK. And now I've got a hatch with grading. Now I can do a couple of different things. If you are not using Navisworks, you can leave this <clears throat> as is, um, either flat or, and you know what, I'll copy this platform over 10, 20, 30. Okay, so we're going to move this over 10 feet. Oops, we went 20 feet last time. So I'm going to move both of these over uh, 20 feet. All right, so if, you, if I do a realistic visual style, you can see here this one is with the transparency on the grading. Just a block, easy to work with, easy to see through. If you need something quick, and just show some thickness there. We have something here, it's a little bit more realistic. 
Um, it's got a hatch on it, but it's just lines and it is a, a hatch and it's not elevated. One of the things that you can do to this is, and I'll explain that on the next one, um, but or I'll, I'll do it here. You can raise this hatch up one inch, take your line, go to your properties and give it a thickness of one inch. This just gives a height to it and that thickness allows it to also be, re also be represented as a 3D object. Now it actually does have height, so it's at the proper elevation. Uh, being as how this is a hatch, nothing can snap to it unless you have that option turned on. Real quick, that option is over here under drafting. Uh, it says ignore hatch objects for your snap. If you take this off, you can snap to a hatch. So uh, a little bit ago, I mentioned something about Navisworks. Hatches do not show up in Navisworks. If you need this to show up in Navisworks uh, and you're using that, explode it. Um, but then once you explode this hatch, it becomes individual lines. So let's move this off to the side again. We're going to select this and this over here, just about 10 feet. I keep doing that. All fat, fat fingering everything here. Okay. So we're going to do it a little slower now. Move this, move the line 10 feet. Okay. What you can do is explode this and after the fact make a group of everything. Now it's one object, move it back 10 feet. So if you need to uh, move this all together, you don't have to go select everything um, or unfreeze all your objects except for grading. You can just keep it as a group, move it all together. Um, and you can now snap to it because it's individual lines. So there's that method. <clears throat> okay, the last two methods are very similar. Um, what you can do is, we'll put that, a UCS is still there, so I'm going to hatch, and my visual style is still turned on, but that's okay. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to, um, I'm going to move this up, and actually I exploded it first, which is fine. So I'm going to select everything, and uh, we're going to do an MP edit. We're going to change everything to a polyline. So I do MP edit to do, and I think you believe you have to have express tools for this. If you don't, I'm sorry, this doesn't apply to you. I should have mentioned that at the very beginning that these methods don't apply because you need to use the um, uh, MP edit, multiple polyline edit, which I'm not sure where it is in the menu. But uh, So MP edit, it says after you select your objects, do you want to convert all the arcs and lines to polylines? Yes. Now you have polyline options. You can just say width, and we said 316 uh, bearing bars. We're going to say enter, and that gives a width to everything. So now if I look, they've all got widths. Now, it's important to understand that these crossbars, they are not actually bearing bars. They won't have a 316 height to them. Um, if you look at actual grading, they're going to be like smaller bars that connect uh, these actual bearing bars. Um, but for the sake of argument, we'll leave them at 316 width. So what I can do again is move this stuff up one inch um, and then give, select the, my perimeter line and give it a thickness of one inch and then do the group. Oops, group. And then we move this back 20 feet. All right, so now we've got this style. Again, it just gives a bit more thickness so we're getting more and more realistic as we go on. You choose your preferred style, but you can see this has got some actual thickness to it, but you can still see you know, fairly easily through the structure at an angle. Now, the last is gonna be the closest to realism, uh, except for those um, connecting bars, which are actually rods, um, unless you're doing heavy duty grading. So we're gonna do a hatch again, select this, hit okay, explode it, now we're going to do an MP edit, again, like the last one. Say yes to convert everything, give it a width of 3 16 The only difference is now we're going to give everything a height of one inch, like it would be in the field. Again, these bars are actually going to be most likely rods, um, and so they're not going to show up as bars. But for the for the sake of speed, you don't you, that that's one area that you don't have to be as accurate with. But what this does now is it gives us actual grading bearing bars by doing this. And so I'm going to move this back 20 feet. And there we are. Now we've got grading. 
the only thing about this one, so it is more realistic. However, <clears throat> you are going to have issues when looking at it at an angle. You can see how all of the other ones don't really seem to have that issue. This is the only one that has that issue where you can't really see through it at an angle. This one kind of does, but I think it's just because of the, uh, the color. You can also uh, give transparency. So let's say I wanted to do this and apply it to this. I now have grading and that grading has transparency applied to it. So that come out like, you know, it doesn't really obstruct your view. Same thing here, match properties. Actually, I don't want to match properties on this because it's a polyline. So I want to, uh, and it will affect things. Um, so towards that transparent grading layer, again, we're transparent, but we've got width and we're elevated. And lastly, uh, doing this one again, does the same thing, gives you some level of transparency while still keeping your grading. Um, it's up to you how you want to do this. Also, when you're working in Navisworks, transparency in AutoCAD does not transfer to transparency in Navisworks. You actually have to set that on a layer level or object level in Navisworks. It doesn't carry over. So even if you set transparency here, transparency will not work in Navisworks unless you set it there in Navisworks. This is just for AutoCAD. Um, so there you are, there's your different styles of grading. Um, one quick thing I'll mention is let's say you are uh, dealing with some penetrations, something maybe cutting through the center of your, or somewhere along the line in your um, your platform or whatever you're cutting grading through. Just do a hatch, instead of doing um, select objects, just pick points. It still works the same. Um, you can, again, explode, um, do your MP edit, and say yes, um, and then uh, width of 3 16 and then uh, give everything a width of one inch. Now, one thing to keep in mind, circles cannot have widths. If you need to have them as a width, convert it into two arcs that are connected um, because you cannot give a, a circle a width. Also, if you need the perimeter of, of this and maybe the circle to be taller, a lot of times these openings will have collars on them, like banding, toe plates. Um, what you can do is give it a, a, an additional height. Usually the banding or the toe plate is about four inches above grading, so you can say five inches total. From, it's from the extrusion from the bottom. Um, and then there is your, uh, there's your collar. You, if you really want that accuracy on this one, you can, again, cut this into two arcs and then give it a width of uh, whatever you need to. But I usually don't. I just want something to, to show off that this is a, a toe plate, so I extrude it further. So there's a couple things on that. Um, and that's it. There you are. There's your short tutorial on how to make um, different styles of steel grading. Thanks for watching.